Hi, and welcome to the Simply Learn YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Google Ads and how to advertise on Google. We'll be talking about what is Google Ads, how do you set it up, why would you use Google Ads. We're going to do a demo of Google Ads and we're going to look at things like optimization and how to track your results. But before we go into that, let me quickly introduce myself. I am Mark Kempman. I am your digital navigator for this video. And by the way, don't forget to like this video or subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking down below. Right, so when you are setting up your brand and you need to make sure you reach the right audience with the best results, then there's only one place you can go to, and that is Google Ads, one of the largest advertising platforms that you can find online. Yeah, so in today's session, we're going to be talking about what is Google Ads, why do you use Google Ads, what are the benefits. I'll be giving you a demo of Google Ads on how to set it up and how to create your first ad. And then we're going to look at how do you measure your Google Ads, what are the things you want to measure, measure and how do you optimize your ads so you're getting better results from your investments in Google Ads. So let's look at what Google Ads is all about, where can you find it, what are Google Ads and where do they show. So first of all, it's very important to understand that there are two forms of Google Ads. Yeah, there is the Google Search Ads and there are the Google Display Ads. So the search ads, they show on the Google search result page and the display ads, they show on websites. And there are thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of websites that have an agreement with Google to show Google ads and those websites get a small compensation for every time Google shows a Google ad on their website. Now, within those search ads and website ads, there are different versions, but we'll come to that later. For now, very important for you to understand, there are Google search ads and there are Google display ads, and they are inherently different in how you use them, how you set them up, and when you use them. So Google ads launched in 2000 as Google AdWords. And over the years, it has gone through a massive transformation. And by now, it is Google's main source of revenue. So where in 2000, it was just the search ads that Google launched. By 2005, they launched the display ads and the ability to track your conversions of your ads. By 2008, Google bought a company called DoubleClick, which enabled uh, people and users to do a much better targeting with their ads and it also launched the ad extensions in 2008. In 2013 Google launched campaign management that you could run on multiple devices. By 2016 Google introduced a showcase shopping ads and 2018 was an important year where Google did a full rebranding of Google AdWords and as it is now called Google Ads. And by 2021, just to put it into a perspective for you, Google achieved a revenue of 250 billion US dollars from their advertising business. Compared to um, Facebook, Facebook advertising in 2021 was around 100, 125 billion dollars. Now, don't forget, you may have read in the news that advertising revenue is, um, is under a lot of pressure for the big players like Google and Facebook because of the economic downturn that we're going through at the moment, but also because there is a change in the way Google are going to allow businesses to track people who are visiting their website and make it more difficult to retarget people with ads when they visit a website. But more about that later. But for now, important that you understand Google AdWords has changed into Google Ads. 
So let's dig a bit deeper in what Google Ads can do for you. So it falls under the category what we call pay per click. Yep, and that is basically the business model that Google uses for the Google Ads, which is basically um, when as soon as somebody clicks on the ad of a, um, of a company, then that com the, the brand will pay for the ad. We call this pay per click. There is also pay per impression. So as a brand, you would pay um, a certain amount per thousand times that an ad is shown to people. But the most common model is what we call pay per click. So a user pays, so a brand pays when users click on their ads. And in digital marketing terms, it is called PPC. So very important that you understand that concept. Now I often get the question, but what if somebody clicks, like a competitor clicks 20 times on my ad, would I then pay 20 times yeah, for each click? Of course not, Google has protected that. Google will track um, yeah, on illegal clicks on ads and even if there are bots that are clicking on your ads. So Google tracks that very carefully. <clears throat> so then what are Google Ads and what is it? So Google Ads is an online advertising platform that, develop, that is developed by Google and in that online advertising platform Advertisers can set up their ads, whether they're being search ads, display ads, product ads, video ads or app ads. And I'll show you later in the demo how you can just go to Google Ads online to set it all up. There is also a Google Ads editor that you can actually download as an app and you can create your ads online and then as soon as you go, uh, sorry, you create your ads offline and then as soon as you go online, Google will then synchronize your ads in the, uh, the online platform. So that is what Google Ads is all about. It is an online platform where you can create and set up your ads. So what are the benefits that you're going to get from it? Lots of benefits. A very important benefit is that it will increase your visibility to an audience that you can select. Yeah, one of the big advantages of digital advertising on Google or on Facebook is that you can target very specific audiences. Yeah, so you can advertise your product or service to a relevant audience to make sure that those people perform the action that you require from them, whether that is um, a click to buy a product or a click to register for an event yeah, or a click to download something. A second advantage that you get from Google Ads is that it is a very effective way to tell people about your brand. Yeah, so we call this top of mind awareness. And particularly with the display ads and the video ads, they are very important to build this top of mind awareness where you're the first one that comes up in a consumer's mind when they think about a particular industry or a particular category. Yes, yeah, so we have the lead generation, we have the awareness and a third really important benefit that you get from Google Ads is that you can retarget website users. Now, what does that mean? You have all received those ads yeah, where you visit a website and then guess what? After 10 or 15 minutes, you are on Google and you see an ad for that product or you're on Facebook and you see an ad for the product that you have just visited. Or maybe you put a product in the basket where you wanted to buy it, but then you didn't buy that product. Now, how do those companies do that? Very simple, on every page of their website, they put a little piece of HTML coding. And as soon as somebody visits that page, that HTML code will trigger a connection with Google Ads or with Facebook Ads, depending on the code that you use. And that particular code will tell Google that 
user has visited this page at this time with this device from this location. And then you can save that data in a retargeting audience. And then you can select that audience by creating and setting up your ads. So a very powerful method to retarget people that visit your website. Now, over the next few years, this is going to change. Google is going to, to stop enabling third parties to track cookies yeah, on people's visits on, on particular websites. And that will kind of undermine the whole process of retargeting. So the industry is now busy finding new ways of retargeting or targeting people. But in the end, it comes down to being very more specific about the audiences that you want to target with your, uh, your advertising. So watch that space of the retargeting. Big changes are ahead of us. There's more benefits that you get from Google Ads. Yeah, there is a lot of data that you get. There is increased intelligence that you get. You, Google uses artificial intelligence to track the performance of your ads, but turn that into very relevant data that you can use to improve your bidding process. As you will find out later, Google Ads is based on putting on a bid on what you want to pay for the ad, and then through an auction, Google will decide which ad will show high up on the Google search screen. Now you can, and that's best for the beginners of Google Ads, you can do that automatically. You can just tell Google, hey Google, when you run this ad, you decide on the bidding. This is the budget that I want to spend. You decide on giving me the best price for the ad, given the budget that I have. If you're more experienced, you can go for enhanced cost per click, where you are going to go into manual bidding based on previous conversion data and other information like device, model or browser. You can then in, put in a manual bid yeah, that can help you in getting a better conversion. You can also do a target cost per click, which basically means that you adjust your bids to meet predefined cost per conversion goals. That is quite advanced, but for the beginners, and if you're a beginner, I would highly recommend you to use automatic bidding where you let Google do the bidding for you. The next thing that you get, which is of course part of that increased intelligence as well, you can track everything. You can very specifically measure the performance of your ads. You can determine who clicked on the ads, where did the traffic come from, yeah, what is the traffic that came to our website, how many people clicked on my ads, um, how many leads did I get from that, yeah, how many people get to the landing page, and um, then you get all the data about what devices are they using, what times did they click on the ad. So you can get a lot of data that can help you in measuring the performance of your ad. And that's what we'll talk about at the end of this session, where I'll give you some um, important measuring data that you want to track. With Google Ads, you also have a very high flexibility. It has a number of components to optimize and to customize your ads and campaigns, to target the audience that you want to reach. You can specify keywords, you can narrow your audiences, you can set negative keywords. Very important concept of Google Ads is the, um, the campaign ad group ads structure. Yeah, so Google Ads has three elements, which is on the campaign level, an ad group level, and the ad level. And the ad inherits the settings of the ad group, and the ad group inherits the setting of the campaign. So it's very flexible, and when we go into the demo, you get a better idea of how this works. Now, because you're getting more traffic to your website, you are also getting an improvement on your search engine rankings. 
Yeah, because more traffic to your website, more pages that Google recognizes you with the keywords. So it will in the end have a positive effect on your search rankings. But don't confuse, yeah? Pay-per-click does not automatically lead to better search engines ranking. SEO and pay-per-click are separate areas, but they do impact each other. When you do active PPC, you get more traffic to your website, yep, and that will turn in higher search rankings if you combine, if you make sure that you have the right keywords and the consistency in the keywords. Okay, so let's dive a bit into Google Ads. Yeah, what are the various formats of Google Ads? And there is a wide variety of ads available that Google built up over the years, but it's not that complicated. At the very first level, there are the text ads. They are very powerful for lead generation. Yeah, these ads only have text, they are found on the Google search engine result page. And traditionally you will find them at the top of the search engine result page and the bottom listings of the search engine result page. The quality of your ad, and we'll come back to that later, determines whether you're on the first position, the second or the third, or at the bottom part of your ads. Yeah, very powerful text ads. Now, there is a big difference between text ads and display ads that we talked about earlier. With text ads, I have an intent. I have a question. I search for answers. And if your ad shows the answer, then I'm prepared to click on your ad. So I am there ready to click on the link that gives me the best answer, whether that is an ad or whether it's an organic listing. With display ads is different. I am not in search mode. I do not have a question. I am actually in interest mode. I'm reading an article on a website. So your ad has to stand out, has to stand stop me or has to interrupt me in what I'm doing. Yeah, and only then will I click on your ads. So text ads have changed, and again I'll show that in the de demo later, you now have dynamic search ads. So basically you give Google in the Google Ads settings a selection of headlines and a selection of descriptions, and then Google will mix and match the headlines with the descriptions and try to find the search ads with the best, uh, the best conversions. Okay, so that is the search ads. Let's move on, let's go to the responsive display ads. Similar to the text ads that are um, dynamic, where Google takes a selection of your headlines and your descriptions, the same with responsive display ads. You put in a library of, um, of, uh, of, of graphics, yeah, an, uh, a, an image asset, so different types of images, and it could be your logo and images that you want to use in your ad. You do different headlines, and then Google will automatically adjust the size, the appearance, and the format of your ad depending on the space available. Yep, and it could be an image ad, it could also be a text ad. It all depends on the space available. So again, you don't have to create the actual ad. You just put in the creative assets and Google will create the display ad for you. You can also say, no, I don't want that. I actually want to create my own ad and then you can just create image ads yourself upload them in the, um, the, the, the Google Ads platform, and then Google will use those images, yeah, those ads that you've uploaded in the different formats that you created, uh, that you've selected yeah, for the website. <clears throat> okay, we then have app promotion ads, yeah, which is a new sort of um, category of ads with the growth of mobile apps 
it's very important and, and lots of brands are interested in promoting their apps. Yeah, and promoting for downloads or engagement in the app. So therefore you can select promotion or app promotion ads in Google Ads and then Google will sort of add those ads to the apps that people are using. So those are the app promotion ads. And then you have a very powerful form of advertising in Google Ads, which are the video ads. Video ads can be run as standalone ads on the YouTube search screens, or they can be inserted in other videos, either before videos or after videos. And they can be skippable or non-skippable. And you've all seen those ads. When you are on YouTube, you see an ad, and then uh, you, after three seconds, it will say skip ad. Sometimes you see that, sometimes you don't. <clears throat> Very powerful ads. People love to watch videos. It basically comes down to putting your ad on YouTube as a video, and then in Google Ads, you assign that video to an ad. And there are lots of examples of really good ads based on uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube videos. This is also very interesting for content creators. If you have a certain number of subscribers to your channel and a certain number of viewing hours, you can then qualify for the YouTube um, creators program where you can uh, monetize your videos by allowing Google to place ads in front or in your videos and you get a compensation for that. So that is how many YouTubers are monetizing their business. Now, an important element I want to add here is the power of mobile ads. Yeah, a lot of people are banner blind. We call this banner blindness, where they are tired of seeing all those ads on YouTube and on websites. Yep, and particularly in the display and the video ads because they don't ask for it. On Google search, it's different. Yeah, because you have that intent that we talked about earlier. So what people do on the desktop, often they put in an ad blocker. So you don't see any ads. So that means that for brands, their ads on desktops are less effective. They're reaching fewer people. But since more and more people are browsing their, um, on the internet on their mobile, and particularly video ads, yeah, and on video, it, over on YouTube and on mobile, it's more difficult to put in a, uh, an ad blocker. So you'll see that ads on mobile often have a higher conversion than ads on desktops. Good. Then there are the product shopping ads, as you see here on the screen, yeah, they pop up at the top of the search result page where you can actually advertise your products and that drives traffic to your product pages. Now, you need to set up a Google merchandise store for this and you need to make sure that you sort of uh, connect your product catalog from your website with the Google Merchandise Store. Once you've done that, you can then activate the shopping ads or the product ads. There is also the showcase shopping ads. These ads have an image and a description that expands when clicked, providing information about other products and store information. So these are not necessarily um, yeah, pure product ads, but they are product ads to showcase other products. And then there is, on particularly for the mobile, the call only ads that you can select. Yep, and that sort of concludes the, the, the variety of ads that you can select from in setting up your, your Google ads. So enough of the theory, let's have a look at the uh, practicalities of Google Ads and let's go into Google Ads to show you how to set up a Google Ads campaign. To do that, you make sure that you are logged into your Google account, you go and search for Google Ads and then you just click on the Google Ads link 
like here. Um, and that takes you to the Google Ads homepage. Now, if you haven't got a Google Ads account, you click on Get Started. Yeah, and you see a lot of background information on this page that will help you with all the aspects of setting up your Google Ads account. You will need a credit card to create an account. That's the easiest way to set it up. If you already have a Google Ads account, you just click on Sign In. And if you click on sign in, it will then um, ask you if you have multiple Google Ads accounts, who do you want to, which account do you want to use? And I click on my personal Google Ads account. And this will take me to the Google Ads home screen. It's kind of your dashboard where you have a summary of how your campaigns are running and how they are doing. Now you see currently I'm not running any campaigns, so that's why you don't see any clicks, you don't see any impressions. You see the campaigns that you have in the, under development, etc. It also gives you some advice on how you can improve your campaigns, some billing information and, um, and what have you, and some other best practice tips. And then here you see basically the interface to the menu functions that you have. Remember we talked about the setup in Google Ads split in three areas. Campaigns, ad groups and ads and the assets of the ads. Besides that you have your landing pages, your keywords, audiences, the content and various settings that you have. And then here you have search within your Google Ads reports that you can create. And here you have tools and settings. And there's a whole library of tools that you have access to. Planning tools, shared library, bulk actions, measurement, setup where you can, for instance, specify access and security, and you can see, uh, you can ac uh, give access to colleagues, for instance, in um, Google Ads, that they can edit or view the campaigns. There's your billing information, and you can link accounts as well, like your Google Analytics, for instance, and then you will see your Google Ads data in Google Analytics as well. Okay, so the easiest bit, if I click here on campaigns, or I just gonna click on create a new campaign. And that will take me to the new campaign setup. And then there is two ways of setting up your campaign. You can either go in expert mode, yeah, or you can be guided by Google, and we call this goals guidance, which means you can select what is the goal for your advertising campaign and then Google will automatically tailor all the settings towards that specific objective. So you can have a sales objective where you want to drive online sales for instance or in-app, you can create leads, Yes, so where you can encourage customers to, to click on a call to action. You can drive traffic to your website. You can do product and brand consideration. You can look at brand awareness to reach as many people as possible to promote your app or local store visits and promotions. I'm going to do a very simple campaign. I'm going to drive traffic to my website. So I click on traffic and then here you look at your conversion goals do i want to have page views do i want people to submit a lead form so i can specify these conversion goals yeah in my settings i'm, I'm not going to go into that now that is a slightly more advanced element i just click continue and then it asks me what is the campaign type am i going for search campaigns yeah, am I trying to reach multiple audiences so I can go for search and for display so Google will give you the maximum performance for your campaigns? Am I going for a display advertising campaign, a shopping campaign, a video campaign or a discovery which is running ads on YouTube, Gmail, Discover and more? The most uh, obvious one of course is the search and the display or the video. Those are the ones that are being used most. And of course, if you have an e-commerce site, then you could go for a shopping campaign. So let's set up a search campaign. 
click on search then you need to give up your website so I want to drive traffic to my website riyadfarasha.com and I'm going to call the campaign let's say a winter campaign <coughs> and I click continue and now I'm going to create a new campaign start new yep so now the first step of my campaign setting is the bidding yeah there is more campaign settings I can look at my keywords and ads I can look at my budgets and my review of the ads this is the steps that I will be going through I want to focus my um, uh, my campaign and my bidding on conversions it is always better to to use the recommendations from Google for your campaign particularly when you're new to Google Ads am I going to set a target cost per action no I'm going to look uh, leave that Google will do the bidding for me based on the maximized conversions bid strategy so Google will set the bids for my ads which will give me the maximum conversions on my campaign yeah so I'm just going to set that all on automatic I'm then going to say what networks am I going to use it is basically I selected the search network but what Google will also do if I want it to to turn my search ad into a small display ad which gives me a wider reach of my um, my ad so that is always good to leave that default both search network and display network and then here you have a very important section you can set the locations where you want to show your ad you can do it around the world you can just look at the United Kingdom you can also enter a very specific location I can for instance say London yep and now I can say London England United Kingdom so let's pick that one yep so now you see my reach is 43 million and 500 people that will see my potentially see my ad I can also target by postcode if I want to include for instance Reading yeah so RG4 RG40 which is England is Reading there are quite a few of them so I can actually <coughs> target by postcode yeah so um, if I go further for RG yeah so we have four and then that could be RG uh, 42 yeah so I can make my section my sec segment as big as possible there are other options as well I can specify people that are present or are interested in that location or people that are just present in that location or people who are searching for the targeted location I can also exclude people so as you can see there's lots of options in the targeting that you can do I can go for advanced search you see I can even specify by map you see here I have London and here's a bit on Reading that I selected yeah, and if I zoom in on that I can get many more details that I want to add in there yeah so very advanced targeting by location in the search ads now you will see in the display ads the targeting is completely different you can still target by location but you will also be able to target by interest of people because in the display ads you are searching for websites that people will uh, see your ads yeah, you are selecting websites where people will see your ads so that can be done by interest by behavior and, and by um, by location or you can actually specifically pick the websites that you would like to show your ads on you can specify the language default is English there are audience segments here's some basic segmentation that you can do in um, the uh, search ads as well for instance I'm only interested in people that are um, have an affinity with travel for instance 
Yes, so that's how I can be more specific in the audience segments. And here are more settings. I can do add rotation. So that is where I ask Google to do kind of a, an A-B testing for me. Google will mix and match the ads and will pre the, present the best performing ads that it finds. You can set a start and an end date. You can specify the timings for your ad, the times that it will be shown. My recommendation is to start off with all day and use the Google learning data that Google will give you to improve the ad scheduling at a later stage. You can also do campaign scheduling um, or specific campaign URL options where you can um, track your campaigns. That is slightly more advanced and we'll cover that in a more advanced Google Ads section. And then you have dynamic search ads. You can specify that as well for the specific targeting. And that is quite advanced as well. So I'll be skipping that as well. Now that we've done the campaign settings, we're going into the ad groups. Yeah, and the ad group that we're having here is the uh, first thing that you put in there. Here's the name for the ad group. Yeah, so I'm going to change the name into Winter Campaign Ad Group 1. Okay, so then the very important element of your ad keywords and your ad groups is to specify the keywords. Yeah, and because you've put in your website, Google will automatically go into your website and it will give you an example set of keywords that you could use. The best is to come up with a set of 20 to 25 keywords. Now, these are the keywords that Google will be using to match your ad with the search queries. So when somebody searches for Riyadh in Marrakesh, yeah, then Google will match that with my ad because in my ad I have picked Riyadh in Marrakesh as one of my keywords. Okay, so that um, is what you can do here in your keyword setup. Yep, in the settings you can see, so that I can show you later, you can also specify your negative keywords. But again, this is just for a quick introduction. And then here we're going into the ad creation mode, which is the third step of your campaign. So that is where you have your ad itself. Now, the beauty about, again, Google Ads, it will help you in coming up with ideas and suggestions for your um, for your campaign here it will tell you how good is your ad and here you can see what the ad will look like now if you don't see anything here very likely you will have an ad blocker active okay so switch the ad blocker off and then we will see the ad preview and you can see that on the mobile you can see how it looks on the desktop so it's very, very convenient. And then here you set up your ads. So here you have the URL, which is the final URL where the um, ad will be linking to. But there is also a display URL. So I can, for instance, say here, winter promotion. Yeah, so I can basically use the text in the ad of the link as kind of a promotion text. I can add that as the text that will help convincing people to click on the ad, where the actual link could be something completely different. Yep, and then here you're going to put your headlines and you can have a maximum of 15 headlines. Now Google has already given some suggestions and you can have a number of, let's say, four descriptions. <coughs> You could add images as well, particularly for um, there are ads in the, in the display uh, ads with a, um, a rich um, advertising. Yeah, so you can add images as well, um, particularly for the, uh, the display ads that you may uh, have. And then here you have uh, site links. Yeah, so these are what we call asset types. There are a number of asset types that you can add to your campaign. 
yeah, to your ad. These used to be called extensions. They are now called asset types. So you can do ad promotions, you can add prices or telephone number, a snippet of text, a lead form, a call out or apps. Yeah, so these you can add to the ad and they will show below the ad. Okay, but for now, this is how I want the ad to look like. So I'm clicking done and I'm clicking next. And now it takes me to the budget section. So here you see it recommends a budget of 94 pounds. Now that is a bit much. So I'm actually going to set a custom budget of a lot lower. I'm going to, let's say, put it on 25 pounds per day. Yes, so, but you will see that it will give you a, um, a lower kind of a performance, of course, for your ads. And this is, of course, Google's way to sort of stimulate you to spend more money on your ads. But my advice is start small, yes, see what you get, and based on the learnings and the results that you're getting from your ad, you can start expanding your budget. So when the ad is ready, you're going to review your campaign. Google is going to check the ad for, error, for errors. Yeah, there is an issue. I can get more clicks if I add more site links and more assets. Yeah, I'm not going to do that now. But here is the review of the campaign. And when I now click publish, yeah, it will go not live yet, but it will go into approval mode for Google. Yeah, Google will then analyze your campaign, check if everything is okay, check if you're not breaking any rules or regulations, and it will then publish your campaign based on the date that you've specified in your ad campaign. Yep, so that is in a nutshell how you set up an ad. Now, I'm not going to publish this. Yeah, I'm going to close it. I'm going to save it for later. Yep, and if I now go back to my campaigns list, then here you see my draft winter campaign, and here you see the details. There's another one, an autumn campaign, I haven't finished that. Yeah, so you see your budget, you see your status, and then here you can also see the results of your campaign. How many clicks did you get, how many impressions, what is the click-through rate, the average cost per click, etc. All the details that you will get. But since this is just an introductory to, uh, introduction to Google Ads, I'm going to leave it at this and we will have a more advanced Google Ads video um, in, the, um, in the future. But for now, this is all I want to show you in, um, in Google Ads. So let's now have a look at the, uh, what you can measure, what is important in the measurement of your Google Ads and how you can optimize your ad campaigns. So now that you've seen how to set up an ad, let's spend some time on how to track your ads. And Google Ads has an extensive tracking system in place. You can even connect your Google Ads with Google Analytics to get even more detailed results on your, uh, your Google Ads. But they all come down to some important metrics that you need to track. So let's have a look at those. There are impressions. Yeah, so how many times do people see the ads? There is cost, there is clicks, and there is what we call the average cost per click. So what are impressions? Impressions are the number of times that your ad is shown on a search result page, on the Google search page, or in the Google Display Network. Now remember, for those impressions, you don't have to pay. Yeah, you only pay when somebody clicks on the ad. So when somebody clicks on the ad, yeah, then you start paying. So there is a cost involved for that. So the cost refers to the amount of money that you're spending on your campaigns. And every time somebody clicks on your ad, it is being charged to your sort of account and then where you start paying for your ads. So a click refers to the number of times a person clicks 
on your ad. And of course, that is what you want. Unless you want pure awareness, you could do that on Google search. Yeah, but in the end, you want people to click on the ad that will drive them to your landing page where they, they may then click to buy your product. So that click refers to the number of times a person clicks on your ad. So if you want to turn that into a metric, you can measure the average cost per click, which is basically the cost of your, that you have yeah, for your campaign divided by the number of clicks. So if I have 50 clicks and my cost was 100, yeah, my cost per click is 2 dollars. That's a very important metric because of course you want to have as low a cost per click as possible. Now what you can find on the internet if you search for average cost per click per industry you will find sort of average cost per clicks per industry which can be very useful if you run your campaign. And you will see that can range anywhere between half a percent to three, four percent. Okay, so that is your average cost per click. There is also the conversion side of the business. When somebody clicks on your ad does not necessarily mean a conversion. When somebody clicks on your ad, they will go to a landing page and on that landing page, you have a call to action. And that could be click to buy or click to, um, to register, click to sign up or click to download. That is what we call a conversion and you can track those conversions. So the conversions are added when a user clicks on your ad and performs an action that you've defined as a goal. For instance, signing up for a website, buying a product, or registering for a newsletter, or what have you. Yeah, so those conversions are very important. And they are, of course, lower than the number of clicks that you get. So as you have a cost per click, you also have a cost per conversion. Yeah, that refers to the average amount charged for a conversion from your campaign. So you calculate that by having the cost of your campaign divided by the total number of conversions. Yep, and then you have a, what we call a CTR, which is the click-through ratio. It's the ratio how often people click the ad to how often people see your ad. Total number of clicks divided by the total number of impressions. And then finally, there is also a quality score for your ad. A quality score is Google's rating of the quality of your ad, the keywords of your ads that you use, and the landing page. And Google wants there to be a, um, a consistency between your ad, the keywords, and the landing pages also called an information scent. So when you smell the ad and you smell the landing page, you kind of smell the same. The same brand, the same look and feel, the same keywords, the same messages. Now, this quality score is very important in that for Google to decide how high you show up in the Google search ads page. Remember you do a bid on your ad. It's not automatically that the highest bid will show up highest on the search engine result page with your ad. Google actually takes the bid that you put in, it adds the quality score of your ad and it comes out with a total score and the Total score will decide your position on the Google search page with your ads. So the higher your quality score, the higher the chance that you will show up at the top of the search page. So it can well happen that somebody with a lower bid than you on the same keywords, 
but with a higher quality score will show above your, uh, your ad. Okay, so we talked about the metrics. Let's now talk about how do you optimize your ads. In other words, how can you make sure that you have a, a higher quality score? Because again, as I said earlier, the higher your quality score for your ads, the bigger the chance that your ad will feature on the premium spaces. So very important, here are a few of them. You need to make sure that you use extensions on your ads, particularly your search ads. Use a call extension or a review or a price extension. Yeah, there's a whole range of extensions that you can select from to add to your ads. Google want to see those. Make sure that you test your ads and you can actually ask Google, Google run various versions of the ads and then make sure that you use the best ad which gives the highest performance. People like a sense of urgency in your ads. Yeah, only three hours left or 24 hours left for this campaign. You could actually add a countdown timer to your ad to add this sense of urgency to your ad. Make sure that you have calls to action in your ad. Yeah, so people need to do something. They click on the ad to purchase or click on the ad to register. Make sure that you pick the right placement for your ad. Pick the right targeting for your ads. Yeah, analyze the timings. Google will give you reports on when people click on your ads. Best play, best thing to do when you start a new campaign is to let Google decide on when it'll show your ad. Because Google will learn from that and will suggest the best timings to show your ad once it has gone through this learning stage. Make sure that when you run search ads, you can use the location map yeah, in your, um, to make people aware, particularly for local ads, where you are. And very important, relate your ads to what's happening in the seasons. Yeah, so that could be relate your ads to Christmas during the Christmas time or relate it to, um, what's it, to Ramadan when it's, uh, it's Ramadan or relate your ads to the World Cup football yeah, when the World Cup football is on. So make them relevant to the industry. Use an accelerated delivery method. Google can help you with that in the, the settings. Use extensive keyword research, particularly for your search ads. Yeah, the better your keywords are in line with the search queries of the users, the more likely Google will um, link your ads with, um, with the search queries. Use negative keywords as well. Yeah, very important that you um, exclude certain keywords when you want to use Google search ads. Because for instance, if you do a search ad for accounting, yeah, when you're an accounting business, you don't want to get people to click on your accounting business ad when they are looking for a job, yeah, or when they are looking for free service. Yeah, so you can add jobs as a negative keyword or free as a negative keyword. And make sure that you use dynamic keywords. Those keywords, they may change all the time. Yeah? And think about that um, during your campaign, you can learn yeah, about your keywords. What are the topics, what are the keywords that people use? And you can change those keywords according what people search for. So there is a lot more. You can use branded keywords as well. So make sure that you use your own company name for your keywords. But if you want to be a bit naughty, there's nothing that stops you from using your competitor brand name. Yeah, that when people type in the name of your competitor, that your ad will show up as well. Very important with your, camp your search campaigns that you specify your keywords in what we call broad match, phrase match, and exact match. 
yeah and um, it depends on what Google how Google interprets your keywords if you have a broad match it will um, show other keywords in relation to your keyword as well when it's a phrase match it will make it more specific and when it's exact match it will give you um, as specifically in relation to the keywords that you've specified so broad match will give you a wider audience so you may get more sort of um, clicks on your ad but they may not all be relevant clicks where exact match you will be shown to a smaller audience but that audience is more likely to be a lead because you're exactly referring to what they're searching for aim for a quality score of seven between ten and finally make sure that your landing page is mobile optimized is consistent with your ads is consistent with your keywords yeah so it's the ad it's the keywords and it's the landing page that will contribute to your quality score try not to direct people from your ad to your website make your landing page unique make it only focused on the website or on the call to action that you want people to do yeah don't put too many other clicks on your website the only clicks that you want to see is the click for your call to action we will probably in the future run a specific session for how to develop landing pages because it is a very important aspect of um, uh, of your google ads campaign so then there's more there is make sure that you group and organize your keywords yeah remember we talked about um, the google campaigns the ad groups and the uh, the, the ads yeah so make sure that you structure your campaign logically and that you have a clear structure um, around how you're organized now you can structure it around your products you can structure it about around your locations you can structure it around the seasons different ways of structuring your campaign but make sure you do it consistently and properly and also use at the naming structure that you use for that yeah make sure that you manage your budget yeah that you manage it in relation to your keywords as well and particularly in the beginning use automated bidding yeah let google do the bidding for you when you launch your first campaign you will go into learning mode and google will run your campaign but it is learning and it will during the learning phase optimize your campaign yeah, to make sure that you get the best results now i know this is a lot of information i hope it made clear to you the power of the google advertising platform and it's yeah i'm aware it's been an introduction to the google ads platform but if you want to learn more you'll find a lot more detail on the simply learn youtube channel with more detailed courses and of course we will in the future add more current courses on this topic as well so for now that is it and i wish you a wonderful day and i'll see you at the next video Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.